Fire in the single resistance super battle for some chip damage and we see their pivot into Amphros now looking to close this Tapu Fini. Farming up a boatload of energy this Thunder Punch should be getting the final shield off Tapu Fini the opponent farms up. So what could be a Moonblast tough decision to make. We commit the final shield. It's just to surf. This does mean Tapu Fini on minimal HP makes the final surf but Amphros holds strong when Stunfist does return. The brutal Swing is going to be enough to seal the deal and we see another Amphros sweep. So welcome back to the channel today. We are looking at an absolute monstrous anti-meta pick in the form of Shadow Amphros. Shadow Amphros is rated 273rd on PV Pope, but my god does it pick up some huge meta wins against stuff like Charizard, Jellicent, and that pesky Walrus. Added to this, it's got that Brutal Swing coverage, which hits for huge super effective damage against stuff like Cresselia, Giratina, and Trevenant. These battles have been submitted by a fellow content creator I'm going to call Gund for the duration of the video. I'm going to link his channel down below. Make sure you go check it out. And in game one, we see the absolute nightmare lead. Dragonite into Tapu Fini. We pivot into Drapion. The opponent answers with Obstacle and Drapion, a channel favorite here. We always rep Sludge Bomb, so it'll be interested to see how Aquatel fares in the Open Ultra League. On Aquatel, I do believe we're going to get pretty hard beat in this matchup. You'll also notice Gund must be repping a PvP IV Drapion as my Drapion never loses CMP to Obstagoon and I use a Hundo. We fire off the Aquatel. We make one final Aquatel, unfortunately, with non-stab. This isn't going to be enough to knock out the Drapion on any moves that seems to fare. Fairly neutral against Obstagoon. We don't manage to take the opponent out. We can come in, though, with Dragonite. Commit to the Dragon Breath farm down, and it's going to be looking at two Shield Ampharos to clutch out this game. Obstagoon fires off the Night Slash Dragonite, does tank it. We commit to the farm down back out. Comes Tapu Fini. We are going to go for the single resisted superpower on a CMP tie. So not only do we get some chip damage, the opponent dumps energy. Gund going to be allowing this charge move to go through as we know the wing con lies in Amphros. Can Amphros close? We pivot out and it's Drapion in the back. Gund going to go straight for the Thunder Punch. Thunder Punch is neutral and going to do some nice chip damage. The opponent commits the first shield. And we sneak an entire free Volt Switch. Gund not going to shield the first move in case the opponent gets the debuff. We are now over farming, firing off the next Thunder Punch. If Drapion doesn't shield this up, we might be able to Volt Switch down the opponent. Let's it go. And again, we sneak. Holy smokes. Amphros looking prime now to sweep this game. The opponent full sends the crunch. Gund looking for the farm down. And we get it. We're now only one Volt Switch away from the back to back Thunder Punches. Tapu Fini is going to shield this up. They're pretty bulky, but the question's going to be, can they survive? A stab Thunder Punch is moment of truth time, and Amphros manages to clutch up game one. Very nicely done. And we're off to a very nice 1-0 start, moving into the next battle. I don't know if that's some visual lag. That's how the battles were sent to me. I've got no idea. Well, we didn't get the 3-2-1, but either way, Gun going to tank the first rock side. It does hit Dragonite for super effective, however, as we're a flyer. There's no chance of us getting mud shot down. We're now going for the bait and the opponent craps their pants. Shielding up a potential super gun. Gonna match shields. As we have successfully masturbated, we are going to be able to outpace to the superpower. The opponent attempted to catch the superpower on Cresselia, but we're far too smart. We pivot out into Drapion. Drapion has a favorable matchup against Cresselia. We get the debuff. This is going to mean the second crunch will knock out the opponent. It's going to go for the future site. This probably means they're running future site. And Grass Knot Gun now over farms heavily. Fires off the Crunch on a CMP tie. Fantastic counting. Crunch is either going to force the final shield or knock out the opponent. Let's it go. And this is probably the one matchup you really want Aquatel. As it is only four poison stings and hits this stupid bear trap for super effective. The opponent continues to over farm. Drapion fires off another Aquatel. This gets stun fist now deep in the red. If the opponent goes for a rock slide, Drapion is actually going to survive. The opponent does go for the rock slide. We did survive. However, we did get mud shot farmed all the way down. We come in to Dragonite. The opponent pivoted into Tapu Fini. I personally would have held the superpower. As in the end game, if we do see all shields down, Dragonite would win CMP against the Bear Trap. However, Amphros still looking prime to sweep. The opponent commits the final shield on the Thunder Punch. They farm up to what could be a Moonblast. Tough decision to make. We call the Moonblast and it's a Surf. So the opponent is going to make one final Surf. Can we survive? Amphros not the bulkiest. However, Surf doesn't knock out. We've got the Brutal Swing locked and loaded. And Amphros manages to clutch up another sweep. GG's and thanks for playing, trainer. 
the triple shadows coming out on top against the very very meta team you love to see it moving on to the next battle we see shadow dragonite into a purified glyscor this is a pretty neutral matchup dragonite really not very bulky night slash doesn't get stabbed but it still leaves us almost in the yellow with the residual wing attacks the opponent pivots out into reggie steel looking to catch a dragon claw however the only thing they catch is a superpower to the face it lands for big damage we pivot looking to catch a zap cannon holy smokes did gund make a savage catch yes he did stay in school kids and learn to count it takes 16 lock-ons for this giant tin can to reach a zap cannon and that was absolutely beautiful gun fires off the thunder punch reggie survives on one hp and a dream gun gonna shield this up look to vault switch all the way down when glyscor does return we will be able to resist the wing attacks and return fire with the neutral brutal swings the opponent needs the earthquake to take us out it's just a night slash and frost does survive we return fire with the neutral brutal swing this gets glyscor below 50 percent hp we see an aggressive pivot into dragonite the opponent hanging onto them two shields we're looking to try and get some off the opponent the opponent shields it up gun looking to go for the next dragon claw and this time the opponent makes a savage catch catching the dragon claw on jellicent but this jellicent will have a nasty surprise we've got drapion in the back jellicent does now at least have access to surf but drapion pretty tick due to us resisting the hexes they are gonna have to land three surfs and that probably isn't going to happen. Gun fires off at immaculate timing. When you're using two turn versus three turn, you want to fire off at one, four or seven. The opponent lets it go and then they just concede the match. Really nice gameplay from both trainers there. I love the Ultra League. As Monar pretty thick, you can pivot in and out of matchups. Moving on to the next battle lead, Dragonite into Machamp. The opponent pivots out into Melmetal. We stay in. Gund gonna probably shield the rock side he actually doesn't and holy crap that does huge damage you can see Melmetal a lot more attack weighted than something like a stun fist because we near get one shot Gund returns fire with the super power we now get shield advantage and pivot into Amphros the opponent throws at really poor time and we sneak an entire vault switch the opponent fires off the rock side Amphros does tank that we now fire off the Thunder Punch on a CMP tie. So unlike our opponent, Gun throwing at really nice timing. Thunder Punch doesn't knock out again. Surviving on one HP and a dream, which is pretty brutal. Gun gonna invest the protect shield. We managed to vault switch farm all the way down. Machamp is energy dry and Machamp, not known for its bulk outcomes. Machamp is some shadow on shadow crime. The opponent going to be forced to shield or be left pretty low. The opponent lets it go. They look to counter farm us all the way down. And Amphros going on an absolute tear up. Thunder Punch secures the knockout. The opponent's final Pokemon is a Walrus and holy smokes. Gund going to have to either call the bait or make a catch. We farm up. Fire off the crunch. Walrein won't be shielding the first one. In case we get a debuff, the opponent lets it go. Gun looks to catch. Holy crap. Stay in school, kids. Learn to count. The opponent was baiting, but we still do make a savage catch. Drapion now taking a lot of damage from the Powder Snows. We get some huge lag. I've got no idea if the opponent's not any fast moves. Crunch goes unshielded. We get the defense drop. Gun with a tough decision to make. Are we going to call the Icicle Sphere? Yes, we are. Holy smokes, can we outpace the two Aquatels? Gund going to be shielding this up. The opponent is only five fast moves away from the double. It looks like we're only four away. Gund fires off the Aquatel. Drapion will be winning CMP. The opponent shields the first, but guess what, Walrein? You can have Aquatel number two. And for all the times I give Drapion shit for running Aquatel, clearly it come in clutch in this battle. Holy smokes, Gund, what an incredible win. You can see we're 4-0, heading into the final battle of the video. We lead Dragonite into Obstagoon. We've got that huge one-shot potential with a double super effective super power. Gund allows the first charge move to go through. And you can see, despite us resisting counter due to our huge lack of bulk, this is a pretty neutral matchup. The opponent looks to catch a super power on Cresselia. They don't catch. Gund shows the opponent how to count, making another savage catch. I actually really like Gun's gameplay, and I know if you're a fan of my channel, I make savage catches left, right, and centre. So make sure you go drop him a follow because it looks like his gameplay style is very similar to my own. We are going to return fire with the crunch on this Cresselia. It doesn't knock out. The opponent fires off after only six fast moves. It is a grass knock. Gun doesn't shield, and his Drapion survives on minimal HP. Holy smokes, great awareness from Gun, knowing exactly the IVs of his Pokemon. We fire off the crunch. That secures a knockout on Cresselion. We've even got an Aquatail. 
for some chip damage. Really immaculate mid game play there. From Grund we come in to Dragonite. We've got a load of residual energy. The opponent still with two shields. We go for the Dragon Claw bait. The opponent shields it up. Grund looking to match shields. You can see the resisted counters are tearing through us. Grund is almost at the back to back Dragon Claws. So if the opponent does shield this one, we should be able to make the next Dragon Claw. The opponent realizes that. They let it go, putting faith in their trusty Giratina, but Dragon Claw draws the final shield, and we've now got Ampharos. Ampharos usually would have to run Legacy Dragon Balls to have any chance of winning this matchup. However, last season Ampharos got access to Brutal Swing, and now we're looking prime to sweep another game. Gund gonna be shielding this up. We're now at the back to back Brutal Swings. Brutal Swing from a shadow. Is going to do probably around 45%. This first one is going to get them below 50% HP. And the second one is going to be all she wrote. Very, very nicely done there from Gund. Go check his channel out. Link down below. Incredible gameplay there. I loved his fast move counting and all the catches. So if you're enjoying the content, smash that like button. If you're new, consider subscribing. Today, I've had my battles featured on both Callum on Toast and Nerd Rising's channel. Ironically, I was also using Shadow Dragonite and Drapion, but I was actually using Shadow Alolan Sandslash as my third. A few people did post in my comment section saying they wanted to see it in action, so I did spend 700,000 Stardust and an Elite TM to make the Shadow Alolan Sandslash, and make sure you go check both their videos out. I'm also looking for some more Pokemon that you'd like to see, so if there's a Shadow Pokemon you want to see in action, post it down below in the comment section, and I'll also make that. Despite me being pretty poor, I'll go out and grind the dust and make that showcase. So I'd just like to say thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.